Okay, just a couple safety notes before we start our project today. So our project is going to use soy milk and tea. So if you or someone in your home has a soy allergy, you can substitute the soy milk for other types of milk, like cow's milk, almond milk, maybe even oat milk. Give it a shot and see what happens. We chose these things, soy milk and tea, because they are non-toxic and safe to use with what you have on hand at, in your home and kitchen to dye. But for other dye projects, you should never use the same pots, utensils, and tools for cooking and dyeing. Hello 4-H families and friends. Today we are going to be doing some solar dyeing. That's right, solar. That means the sun. We are dyeing with the power of the sun today and it's going to be so fun. So, first of all, what is a dye? Hmm. All right, so dye is a substance used to color materials. It is often used to color the fabric used to make clothing. A dye can be natural, usually made from plant materials such as tea, flowers, or berries, or artificial, meaning that it is made by humans from chemicals. Most natural dyes are derived from plant sources, roots, berries, bark, leaves, and wood, fungi, and lichens. Today, we are going to use black tea as our dye. Okay, so now let's get started. Yes. Okay, all, so what you need for today's project is you're going to need a couple tablespoons of soy milk, some water, you're going to need a large jar with a cover, an extra bowl for mixing your paint, a paintbrush, a tablespoon measure, some black tea bags. You can also use rooibos tea, you can use coffee, um, any sort of bitter tea uh, you can use. Uh, not just two tea bags, the more the better. The, the fewer tea bags you use, the lighter color it'll be. And then finally something to dye. So here I'm using an old napkin. So rather than recycle or uh, donate this because it has a couple small stains on it, I'm going to reuse it and I'm going to dye it, it'll hide some of those stains and I can use it for other purposes. So, ready, let's get started. Okay, first we're going to lay out our fabric. So, if you're using a bandana, you might have a backside too. You can see this seam here, this is the back where it's folded over and over here you can't see it. So this is the front and I'm going to paint on this front side. So I am just going to take it and I'm going to lay it out on my surface. Okay, now it's nice and laid out flat. If you're doing this inside, you can put newspaper underneath your uh, thing that you're going to be dyeing. And next we're going to mix our paint, which is actually just a mixture of soy milk and water. Okay, so this is pretty easy. I'm going to take two tablespoons of soy milk. Now this is plain unsweetened soy milk. One. Two. And then I'm going to take three tablespoons of water. One, two, three. Okay, and then I'm just going to mix it together. And this is going to be my paint that I will be using to paint the design onto the bandana. All right, so I'm just going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to dip it in the mixture. And I'm just going to paint it lightly onto the napkin here. Now, it's going to be similar to like an invisible ink where after some time it's going to disappear. If you use too much of the paint, it is going to kind of spread out into the fabric a little bit. It won't be as distinct. If you are kind of letting your brush get a little bit drier, 
and dry brushing it. So that's using the dryer brush with a little bit of water to paint, you might get a different effect. Now you can experiment and see what works for you. You can really do any kind of design that you'd like. So while I'm painting the design on the fabric, let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. So first let's talk about mordants. So this word mordant, what is it? A mordant is a substance that's used to set dyes. So it's what's going to make the dye stick to the fabric, essentially, and not wash out. Some examples of mordants are tannins, alum, and iron. Tea and coffee both contain a lot of tannins. It's what makes them bitter, but it also makes them perfect for dyeing. So fun with fibers! Let's talk a little bit about fibers, like cloth. So there are two kinds of natural fibers, cellulose fibers, which are plant-based, like this flax flower, which is used to make linen, or protein fibers, which are animal-based, like wool or silk. They come from animals and they contain a high level of proteins. Now, protein fibers usually hold the dye better than cellulose fibers when it comes to natural dyeing. So we are using soy milk today, similar to a mordant. It's going to help the protein bind to the cellulose fiber. However, soy milk is not actually a true mordant, it's a binder. There isn't any chemical bond that's being formed, but it will make that cellulose fiber act more like protein fibers and take on more color. So what we're doing is painting with the soy milk and the spots that we want to have more color bind to the fabric. They'll be darker when we're finished with our project. Okay, so I have painted my design on my fabric. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this dry. So the proteins in the soy milk mixture here, that's going to start binding with the fabric here and the longer you leave it the better that the proteins are going to bind to this cellulose fiber here so we're gonna leave it for at least a couple days up to a week is best so I have my things now ready here so before we had treated our fabric with soy milk as a mordant and today we're going to dye it so I need some tea a jar and water so let's go ahead so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my jar so I am using this larger size mason jar right here and this is I believe a quart size jar and this is going to be enough for about one bandana so if you're using like a t-shirt you might want to consider using a larger container so I am going to put inside first the tea bags. So I am going to use these ones first. Now I have these. These are actually tea bags that we use for making iced tea in my house. So rather than just throw them away, I'm going to add them to the jar so that way that I'm reusing them and they're, you know, getting one more purpose before they end up in the trash or compost. So as you can see, here they fill up a decent amount of the jar and they still have quite a bit of color left in there because this is the tea that dripped out of it from just putting the tea bags in here wet after taking them out of the iced tea container. I'm also going to add some extra tea bags. These ones say cold brew so they do brew in cold water um, but actually you can use any kind of tea bags that you would like. You're going to get a little bit more color from the newer tea bags since it's the first brew, um, but you'll still get some color from the older tea bags. In fact, you could use all older tea bags and just get like a lighter color. So I'm going to use this just to push the tea bags down a little bit. Um, you don't have to because you can kind of push it down with your hand once you put the handkerchief or cloth in there anyway. Then we're going to put the cloth inside of the jar. So you can see here I have tea bags here um, and the more tea bags you use the darker the color 
will be. The less tea bags you use, the lighter the color will be. So there isn't really a uh, specific number of tea bags to use for this activity. You can use what you have at home and what you're willing to uh, use for the dye. And then we're going to add our water just below the top of the jar. And you want to make sure that your fabric is under the waterline. So I'm going to just push it down a little more. And I'm going to add a little more water. Okay. And then when you have a cover, just put the cover over the top of the chair. As so now you can see already that some of the color is coming out into the fabric here so over time it's going to dye the fabric with the tea so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go put this in a nice sunny spot the sunniest warmest spot that I can find for a couple days and then we'll see how it goes now every day if you want you can go out you can check on it you could shake it up a bit um, and see if that will do anything with the color in there. So let's go find a spot for this. Okay, I'm gonna leave it here on this brick since brick tends to get pretty hot in the heat. And uh, then I'm going to come back in a couple days and see how the colors change. So already in just a couple minutes, you can already see a little bit of that brownish color coming into the fabric on the bottom where it's meeting the tea bags. Okay, it's been several days, so I'm going to open this up and check on the fabric and see what the color looks like. Okay. Now when you take this out, do it over a space that you don't mind getting wet with the tea, or you can put it over a dish pan or a um, cake pan. So we're going to take this out. Ooh. Look at that brown color. Ooh! Look at that! Ta-da! Look at this! Isn't it amazing? You can see the design clearly came through where we painted with the soy milk. That is awesome! It really shows how that protein in the soy milk helps make the fabric that's made from cotton act more like a protein fiber like wool or silk. Isn't that cool? Whoa, here, let's zoom in on this. So you can see that the design expanded a bit from where I originally painted. That soy milk, it kind of soaked through the fabric a little bit so it made larger spots than I originally designed. But isn't that neat? It looks so cool. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to hang this up to dry. It's essentially done, but we want to set it a little bit before we rinse it out or clean it. Because if you rinse it out right now, you're gonna rinse out some of the tea and the color that's in there right now. So let it sit for, just until it dries really, or you can let it sit for up to a week the longer you let it sit to dry before you rinse it out, then the more the color will set and stay in here. And then we're going to wash it. And you can just wash it um, either under the sink, rinse it out and let it dry again. And then after that, you can wash it again in your regular washing machine. Just be careful not to use any bleach or any uh, really powerful stain removers when you're washing this because this is technically a stain so you'll be rinsing out some of that color. I would suggest maybe hand washing it uh, to keep the the color as bright as possible and to also keep it out of the sun or a bright spot because the sun is actually going to uh, kind of bleach the fabric as well. Just like if you leave a piece of colored paper out in the sun, it'll start to lose its color. Same thing with this fabric. Since it's a natural dye and there's no chemicals fixing it, um, besides the tannins in the tea and the soy milk that we use to help it bind to the fabric, uh, it could fade in the sun. 
but this is such a cool result. I really want to see what kinds of designs that you come up with. So feel free to post them or email them to us and we would love to see them. So good luck and happy dyeing.